So, uh, welcome to the introductory Bash scripting room. What is Bash? Bash is a scripting language that runs within the terminal of most Linux distributions as well as Mac OS. Shell scripts are a sequence of Bash commands written within a file combined together to achieve more complex tasks than a simple one-liner and are especially useful when it comes to automating sysadmin tasks such as a backup. Uh, this is this is a few things among many that you will learn in this room. Bash syntax, variables, using parameters, arrays, conditionals, and throughout this room, feel free to work along with me. You can test out the commands shown to integrate them into your own projects. There is a chat if anyone wants to do it. <clears throat> Musek says, Web link. Web link. After all, you learn by practicing and applying what you've learned in your own scenarios. Make sure to spawn the try hack me attack box or use your own terminal. I found this website useful on my journey of learning Bash. Feel free to use it to help you through the room. Ready to go. Alright, okay, so now we have a brief introduction of what Bash is and what it's used for. Let's jump right in for some examples. First of all, let's lay out the structure. A Bash script always starts with the following line of code at the top of the script. Hash, exclamation mark, slash bin, slash bash. This is so that your shell, so this thing, knows what, what it needs to run the file using Bash within the terminal. Let's get back to some basic examples. So we've got bin bash hello world. If this would print the string hello world, the echo, the command echo is used to output text to the screen in the same way that print does in Python. I suggest you test this out in your terminal to get to grips with bash. You can also perform normal Linux commands inside the bash script and this will be executed if formatted correctly. Uh, for example, we can run the ls command inside a bash script and we'll see the output when we run the file. So let's make it do this. Uh, I should probably, let's get a new file, let's save it, uh, documents, thm, bash scripting, let's call it uh, scripts. So, hash, exclamation mark, bin, bash. Then we can change the syntax to be bash. That's not really cool. So, echo. Hello, world. Who am I? ID. Save it. And we should do the Ooh, yeah, I need to give it the execute and then we should run it. Cool, okay. So now from here on I'm going to assume that you have basic understanding of Linux and its commands. If you don't then please go and check the fundamentals room. We've got that one already run through. Um, then come back and try again. I'm not going to include the bin bash at the start of my code snippets otherwise it would take up a lot of room. Be aware that you'll need it at the start of every file. So now run our bash script we need to give it executable permissions. Okay we did that already. Uh, then we run it with dot slash Please run this yourself to see what you get. We can see that it's outputted the results of the commands who am I, so Kali, and then ID. What piece of code can we insert at the start of the line to comment out our code? Uh, a hash. Yeah. What will the following script output to the screen echo bish bash bosh? <laughs> echo that. Cool, variables, let's get deeper. So now we're moving on to variables. In Bash, these are quite simple and we create them like so. Name equals jammy, where we give the value of jammy and assign it to the variable name. 
please note that for variables to work, you cannot leave a space between the variable name, the equals, and the value. They cannot have spaces. So how would we use our variable? Well, it's very simple. We have to add the dollar to the front of the variable name to use it. If we test this out in our own terminal, we get something like this. So let's delete this stuff. So name, no spaces, just said that. Jammy, echo, name. Oh, I like that auto complete. And run again. If we test this out in our own terminal, we get something like this. And this would output Jammy. Variables make it much easier to store data and rather than typing out the same thing in multiple places we could simply insert our variable with $var and then declare that to a certain value making it easier to fall back on if you do something wrong we need to change it. How do we debug our code? Debugging is a very important part of programming uh, so we should get used to the problem solving and fixing errors as early as possible. Bash has a few built in features to make our life simple. When running at the command line you can do the following bash dash x and you can make a simple bash script now you know some basic syntax so if we do bash dash x cool okay so it's just adding each line in <clears throat> You can now add, make a simple bash script, now you know some basic syntax and make something completely wrong. Then step through the program with debug mode and you'll see what it looks like when it throws errors. This tells you which lines are working and which are not. If you want to debug at a certain point you can insert set x into your script and set plus x, or set minus x, set plus x to the end of the section like the following. Uh, okay, that's cool. So if you want to debug specific things. So we don't care about the naming, you just do set minus x, set plus x. So it'll ignore the setting, which is what it printed here, or here, and it will just do that one. No, okay. Prints the whole thing. Hmm. Does that work? Cause it, oh, maybe because I need the X gone. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, there we go. Cool. Let's look at an example. This is our script from earlier being ran with X. You can see it's outputting the pluses for every command. If there is an error, output minus on the line. This makes it easy to spot when it's gone wrong. We can also use multiple variables in something like an echo statement. We aren't limited to using one. Answer the following questions and use this piece of code to guide you. So let's just duplicate that while we're here. So we've got name jammy age equals 21. Echo dollar name is dollar age years old city equals no spaces Paris country equals France. So what would this code return? Oh. Jammy is 21 years old. <laughs> Does that need a hint? Do you know what Echo does? Okay. <laughs> uh, how would you print out the city to the screen? You would... Well, you write Echo City. Echo dollar city. Yeah. How do you print out the country? Same again. Echo 
dollar country. Parameters. Let's do some functions. Uh, let's look at one of the main features of Bash and then it's using parameters. We'll firstly look at parameters specified using the command line when running the file. These come in many forms, but you often have to have the dollar prefix because a parameter is still a variable. Uh, let's start by declaring a parameter that is going to be our first argument when running our Bash script. We now run the script with Alex, so let's add it. So name is dollar one. Echo name. So that does nothing, but then if we give it let's do that in sec. Print my name out. Uh, what if we wanted the second argument? Process is very simple, we'll simply add dollar two instead of name equals dollar one. Then we run it with Alex Tony, what do you think it will return? So what like that, that's what they mean. Prince Mike. if we didn't want to supply them like this however and instead we would want to type in our name in a more interactive way we can use this we can do this using read the code will hang after it's run this gives you the opportunity to type in your name and let's see if it worked so summoning echo giving it the prompt so and enter your name I'm going to do it with string quotes, read, name, echo, your name is dollar name. So we run it, sec, your name is msec. <clears throat> Maybe try making a little biography maker uh, where you take your name, age, job as parameters, store them inside a variable, and then output them to the screen inside a sentence. However, there is much more you can do with the parameters. I advise you to play around with them. After all, practice makes perfect. So how do we get the number of arguments applied to the script? Uh, question mark. <laughs> That's a good point. Doesn't tell me that anywhere. It actually might be in your cheat sheet. Parameter length. your name, msec, number of args, zero. One, two, three, four. Cool. How do we get the file name of our current script, aka our first argument? Using dollar n, 
we looked at. No, we didn't. We never looked at dollar n. So what the hell does dollar n do? If we dollar n. Let's take the read out so it just prints it. name is blank number args. That doesn't do shit. That's not doing anything. What? I call shenanigans. No, it isn't dollar n. Using the dollar n feature. Dollar zero. Zero realbyte says. Zero dollars. I don't get the shit. There's my soda house down there. It's saying like. Look at the the dollar n thing we looked at. I put, I mean, we didn't. Like it's nowhere in this page. There's one match, and that's the one I typed. So yeah, bullshit. So bash dollar n. Oh, dollar n. One dollar in... would be the first input of args, and zero dollars <clears throat> would be the file name. Ah, okay. So dollar zero. That's interesting then. So it treats that as the, the zero arg. Nightbot says You can change your TDS voice here. Web link. So N. Yeah, cool. Uh, how can we get the fourth element applied to the script? Well, dollar four. It's easy enough. If a script asks us for input, how do we direct our input into a variable called test using read? Read test. Um, what will the output of echo one or dollar one dollar three if the script was ran with hello hola aloha hello aloha what was the hint for that one nine subscribers to go until we reach the goal of 15 and unlock new emotes shut slides. up nightbot use those prime subs if you have them zero real bite says Msec, there is a way to add command line options with GitOps if you build a script and don't like having to type the options in the same order every time. That's cool. Get ops. Okay, so that's like using the the double tack inputs. Yeah. So how do we use that? Okay, so you just chuck some in a while loop. While get ops. That's the ones that you allow. And then you just got a switch case to see like which one you picked. Op string. Bar name logs. So 
So if we did uh, let's keep the echo that tests. Today. Let's do an audio test. Let's do T. Um, well, how would you do that? Like dollar one. And then you need to say. Would you do it like that? What does that do? Dollar at. Dollar at expand to nothing, they're removed. Dot at is equivalent to dollar one, dollar two if the double quoted expansion occurs within the word. Elbrook. <laughs> Thank you for the look, Aurea. Yeah, very cool for option. God, she's using like red checks to detect it. I'm not sure I want to go that deep. I guess you actually do have to have a, a while. Same thing. Right. So you have to include it. Dash D. Pace not found. Oh, yeah, because it's fucking doing dumb stuff. Um...
Where's that one? Is that if you use it wrong? <laughs> Illegal option. Supply nothing. Figure this out. Cool. Anyway, let's go back to what we were doing. <clears throat> so, what would the command line to print Aldi to the screen using indexing? Did we learn that? Have I, oh, I've skipped it all. Okay, so let's do arrays. Uh, for this module, we'll follow along with the attack box or standard Linux to make it easier. Arrays are more. Use to store multiple pieces of data in one variable, which can then be extracted using an index. So in the array, what? Okay, there. No, so you have to do it like that. Then we can echo them out, use the at to get all of them. If we wanted to print out train, then we just do one, because we want zero, one, train. Uh, last thing we'll cover is if we want to change an element, we use unset. This now removes the element. What if we wanted to echo it back out? <clears throat> we can see that it's gone. So, so we unset it and then transport one. Item equals train ride. And echo it again. If we echo the array, we get. Oh, I guess we can just use those, can't we? So. Um, If we want to run the scripts, we don't need H. So that prints everything, prints the first item, then we print again after removing train and then re adding an item to the, the first element. So the command to print Aldi, which is the first element, would be cars, or no, echo, cars, one. indexing oh yeah you need dollar in there so cars one wanted to remove Tesla from the array, how do we do so? Unset three. Oh yeah, unset cars three. Uh, how would we insert a new value called Toyota to replace Tesla? We would say cars 
3 equals Tesla. No, Toyota. With single quotes. So conditionals. Uh, we need when we talk about conditionals, it means a certain piece of code that relies on a condition being met. This is often determined with relational operators such as equal to, greater than, and less than. We'll make a simple if statement to check if a variable is equal to a value. We'll also make that script check if a file exists and that it's writable. If we if it is, then we'll write that message to a file. If it's not writable, it will delete it and make a new one. A lot of new things will be taught, so pay attention. First, we'll discuss the basic syntax of an if statement. All if statements look like so. If something compared to something else, then do something else, do something else, and then fi. So we look at an example, let's recreate it. So count equals 10 if square bracket dollar count eq 10 close square bracket then echo true else echo false phi so it equals true because we started with count equals 10 if the statement always use a pair of brackets, and in the case of square brackets, we need to leave a space on both sides of the text. Uh, we also need to end the statement with fi. Here is a variable being declared as 10, and in the top line of the if statement to the variable count, which is being compared to the integer 10. If they're equal, then the output is true. If they're false, the output's false. We know 10 is equal to 10, so output's true. The EQ is one way of doing this. You could also use the equals set, uh, string. EQ checks if two operands are equal or not, and then the condition becomes true. Any equals not equal, or equal or not. The value are not equal, then the condition is true. GT greater than, LT less than, GE is greater than or equal than. So now let's use this to make a little script that compares an input, a parameter that checks against a value to check if it's true or not. A guessing game. So let's keep that syntax to uh, value equals guess me. And then we need guess equals dollar one if value is equal to do you need the quotes there? I don't know if you do or not. Let's just do guess. Uh, so if it is then they're equal. else echo they're not equal so if we do scripts and guess me no it didn't work uh, I just did some weird stuff so maybe you did need uh, what was it? double quotes there
Guess me integer expression expected. So we do need an equals there to do string comparison. Cool, so guess me, they're equal. Uh, we say hi, they're not equal. We can see that it works. Feel free to play around with these and try making different combinations using different operators. And uh, now let's create another script where we'll use two conditions simultaneously and coming back to the concept we learned in the first lesson. Let's begin. We want to make a script that will perform a file before we what? <laughs> make a script that we will perform on a file given by a parameter. We'll then check if it exists and then if it has write permissions. If it has write permissions, then we'll echo hello into it. If it is either non accessible or doesn't exist, we'll create a file and echo hello into it. So File name equals dollar one. Uh, we don't need a guess. If dash f file name We've got two conditions, so and dash we need spaces dash w file name then echo hello what happened there? that was selected so we echo hello into dollar file name otherwise echo hello into file name and we need to create the file so touch file name. <coughs> so if we run that we say hello.txt then we cat out hello txt. You can see that it worked. So the dash f checked if a file existed, dash w checked if it was writable. To finish off our project from the previous task, you can build your script using an if else statement. Test to see if the age is under 18. If it is, then echo out their name with you're not eligible for work or something along these lines. If they're over 18, then ask them for their job. Otherwise, you can do this with read. Cool. Feel free to add anything you like and make it as complicated as you wish, and good luck with your project. So what flag to check if we have read access? W... No, uh, R. Oh. Oh, what is the flag to check if it's in... If it's a directory, um, D? Oh, what a guess. Further reading. Hi there, thank you so much for completing this room on bash scripting. I want to congratulate you on persevering when things get tough. If you want to further extend your knowledge, Code Wars and Hacker Rank, and of course Google. Thanks again if you want to ask me anything about queries about the room. You can reach me on Twitter, Field Raccoon. Good luck on your bash journey. Nice. Yeah, I think I could have gone deeper. Like, I wanted to see like this stuff going on. Um, like bash functions as well. Okay. Methods. Yeah, like why is none of this in there? <laughs> 